D.C. leading Miami at the half, 28-21. Last quarterback at bat may win this one, Pat Hayden. Well, we have two very good wins, and you're absolutely right. And uh, Doug Flutie had a very good first half. The statistics were absolutely phenomenal as you get a look at him. 20 of 27, 238 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And the, who he threw it to, this is the interesting thing, and this is what makes him so difficult to defend. Looks, look at the way he spreads the ball around his wideouts, his running backs. He's hit the tight end a couple of times. Makes him very, very difficult to defend. This was his first touchdown pass to Kelvin Martin. And you're right. And Flutie on this drive had hit his tight end a couple of times and his tailback. He comes right back to his big play man, number 82, Kelvin Martin. The free safety was out of position, allowed Martin to get behind him for the touchdown. And Era, you made a good point about the lack of containment against him. Well, also, in this particular play, this is one of the few mistakes that Flutie made in this first half, and he scored a touchdown on it. He had his receiver bell wide open. He elected to go ahead and run the ball. And I'm just thinking in terms of protection of Flutie. He's got a bowl game ahead of him, but he is really a tough little guy. He's quick, but I think he should have thrown the ball that time. Now, what about the defense against Doug? I think what I would do if I was Miami, they've got to bring pressure from the outside. I think they've got to keep him contained and bring the people from the middle getting their hands up. I think one of the problems is that he's been able to escape any kind of pressure on one side and come clean on the other, and he's so dangerous, he's going to find a receiver. And what about Bernie Kosar? Well, things have gone according to plan. As Flutie has done his thing, so has Bernie Kosar, 245 yards. He also has two touchdowns, and he has distributed the ball around to a lot of different people. And here's the touchdown to his tight end, Willie Smith, number 84. Remember how big he was? He jumped up on the air. This drive saw Bernie Kozaw hit Eddie Brown a couple of times, and then he's found his tight end, big tight end, in the back of the end zone for the score. Now, how would you stop Kozar, Aaron? Well, it's very difficult. They, too, have got to pressure him. I think they've got to come after him, take some chances. He has had too much time to throw the football, and as a result, he's been able to, without any question, complete passes and long, deep ones. All right. Well, you know, a man who has marvelous remembrances of college football seasons past is Lindsey Nelson. And let's hear from Lindsey now. If you have followed... CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. And by J.C. Penney, you're looking smarter than ever, J.C. Penney. Set to start the second half. Boston College leading Miami 28-21 will kick it off. It'll be Kevin Snow to kick for the Eagles. And back deep, J.C. Penny <laughs> on the right. Daryl Oliver on the left. I expect to see someone named Levi Strauss playing <laughs> in the other backfield. It'll go out. J.C. fumbled the ball out of bounds. It'll be down right there. So a big mistake. He should have let the ball go out of bounds, assess the penalty. He knows better than to try to field the ball. It's headed out of bounds right there. The halftime statistics, gentlemen. Well, there wasn't much defense there. We talked about that a whole lot. 660 yards in total offense. The quarterbacks have played magnificently. The statistics prove that. And only one turnover from each team. Looks like some of my normal work. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, we made some adjustments at the half, and it's okay for Hayden to help out on the defense now. <laughs> no, no, I only want the quarterbacks. <laughs> Here's a first down for Bernie Kosar and Miami, trailing it by seven. He'll pass from his end zone on first down. Throws underneath to the tight end, Smith. Out to the 10-yard line. A little breathing room, Era. You see all the adjustments that are being made here, a discussion right on the sideline. And here's the replay of the pass by from Kosar. The secondary is pretty much standard that time. Just an out pattern here. Nobody there to take care of it. We don't see the reception right down here in the corner where the official is. Second and five for Kosar and the Hurricanes. Bratton and Oliver are his running backs. Penalty marker is down. He hits Smith again for the first down. And it is obvious now that Miami is going to try to utilize the tight end a little bit more. And he is a good one. Well, 62 receptions coming in. Brent, you're absolutely right. We saw him catch the touchdown pass in the first half. Remarkable athlete. 
Both sides on the defense decline, push down. So they move the sticks now for the Canes. Both these teams use the tight end an awful lot. And I think that's one of the things that have changed in college football over the years. It shows you some of the sophistication in passing attacks, is, attacks in the college ranks now, where college teams can get to the ball to the tight end very successfully. Ball is at the 16-yard line for Kosar. He runs Oliver on first down. Bangs out to the 32-yard line before David Pereira, the safety, is forced to come up with the stop. That's a gain of 16 and another first down. Brent, when you throw the ball as effectively as Miami does, you have to be able to run draw plays. It has to be an effective run for you. Here it was. Again, they came back and threw the ball in the first couple of downs here in the second half. Then they come back with a draw play to Darrell Oliver. Take a look at Mike Ruth, number 68 in the middle of the screen. We thought this was going to be an interesting matchup. Ruth against Sinclair. Sinclair wins that battle right there. Hard to throw. That's a deep drop. He sets the screen, and that time the BC read it perfectly and banged into Bratton. It was David Thomas, number 50. That was the first time that Boston College went into what they call tough. Both linebackers walked right up into the guards' faces, and they came, and they put pressure on Kosar, man-to-man -man coverage, and Kosar was not able to set that screen. And you mentioned, Eric, that's one of the adjustments that you felt that BC had to make was really to get to Kosar, put some pressure on him. The rain has returned to the Orange Bowl, starting to come down again. Rained hard here earlier this morning, let up just before kickoff, started to clear late in the second quarter, and now the rain has rolled back in. Kozar with time, throws to Eddie Brown. Brought down at the 40-yard line. It'll be short of a first down. Number 45, Todd Russell there. And a penalty marker is down. Boy, Koza really took a shot. But the interesting thing here is watch Eddie Brown. We said how talented he is. What I like about him, Brent, is the way he comes back for the ball. This is a shot throw, but he comes back to make the reception, to greet the ball, catches it with his hands, which is a great sign. But Kozar took an incredible shot here, the punishment that some quarterbacks are going to take after they release the football. And that's a, what I believe the penalty was all about. The ball is gone. There's the hit. And the official's there to make the call. John Boza delivered that hit on Bernie. Fourth on the pass, a personal foul against Boston. First down. As a result of the penalty, the ball is put down on the 47-yard line. First and 10, the Hurricanes trailing Jack Bicknell's Boston College Eagles by seven. It's a shootout in Miami, 28-21. to make the stop as the Hurricanes turn the corner. Obvious uh, audible that time, and he saw that he could log in the contain man on the right side, and they did so, came right around the corner for good yardage. Interesting thing, you mentioned the audible. Don't you think college quarterbacks now are audibleizing much more so than when I played? And again, were you coaching? A, we hardly ever audibleized when I was in college. Uh, we we audibleized an awful lot. Well, there goes that theory. <laughs> Eddie Brown, who has gone over 1,000 yards receiving with 156 yards today. And, of course, pro scouts are thinking about him in terms of a number one draft choice. He could be the best wide receiver coming out of college football today. And as we have seen several times, he is extremely dangerous after he catches the ball. Interesting point, too, Brent. Had Alonzo Highsmith been healthy in play today, he probably would have been over the 1,000-yard mark of rushing. Kozar is thrown for nearly 3,000 yards, and you have a receiver who's caught for 1,000 yards. That's a pretty, very potent offense. You don't see much of that in high school. That man is uh, college. That man deserves some credit because he did come here under some very trying circumstances and really has won eight games against very, very good competition. Second and just inches. Going to the long count again. Penalty marker comes down. Kozar to throw on second and short. Eddie Brown threw his hands and incomplete. Stan 
Stanley Shakespeare is downfield complaining about interference against Brown. Let's take a look and see whether or not he was interfered. He was pushed out of bounds. You can see the audible and they jump offside. He changed the cadence on him. Boston College jumped offside. Here's Kosar throwing it down. Brown went out and then up. And watch right here. Let's see whether or not, well, you can't see. He was forced out of bounds by number 43, Neil Eiken. Right here's another view of it right there. I don't know, no interference there. But he did shove him out of bounds. And he's legally, he can legally come back. Does it matter because BC was offside? So Miami gets the first down. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Brian Blades is back at one safety for BC. He has just checked in. And again, Kozar changes the play at the line. Quick throw to Smith, incomplete. Now that's the second time they came into sort of a blitz situation, putting pressure on Kosar. The linebackers are coming. And Kosar read the, uh, the blitz, of course, and got the ball to his tight end on a kind of a hot principle there. Mike Ruth, a nose guard from BC. We look at those big arms he has. He tries to loop in. The, there's a little line stunt there. He comes in free, but a little late on Kosar. But interesting line stunt there by the BC front, trying to put more pressure on Kosar. Kosar with a second and ten. Reverse with Eddie Brown. They pull the guards inside the 30. First down, out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Vincent Munn defensively for the Eagles finally caught up with him. Well, they ran this play earlier in the game to reverse to Eddie Brown with a great deal of success. And the philosophy is if you don't stop it, we're going to keep coming out at you. Look at number 76. Now, that's the center, Ian Sinclair, who actually snapped the ball, then got out in front. But a very good play, play call by Jimmy Johnson. The thing is, if some, a team doesn't stop the play, go ahead and run it again. Alvin Ward, number 72, could have been called there for a clip or using illegally use of hands. He shoved and pushed off. 15-yard gain and another hurricane first down. Rosar swings to Bratton. All kinds of daylight. Dives down to the two-yard line and out of bounds. Neil Eaton was there defensively after a run of 22 yards. BC's defensive philosophy has changed here in the second half. You're going to see the blitz from the inside right there. The both linebackers come up the middle. They want to put more cr pressure on Kozar. Here's the result, though. He reads it, dumps the ball off to his halfback, Bratton, who pulls a Greg Laganis, gives him a little dive shot right over the top, but a very good read of the blitz by Bernie Kozar. That's good, intelligent offense, I want to tell you. First and goal for the Canes. Bratton over the top. This time, the touchdown, Miami. yards in only nine plays. Drive lasted three minutes and a second. And it is 28 all in the Orange Bowl. Melvin Bratton over the top. Remember Spencer Tillman from Oklahoma last year against Nebraska? And how many times have we seen Herschel Walker go over the top? Well, here's Melvin Bratton's chance to go over the right side of the line. Very good surge by the offensive line. But this drive was remarkable. We saw reverses to Eddie Brown. We saw the tight end catch the ball. The ball was thrown all over the field. That's tough to defend. Oh, what Sylvania light bulb. Impressive drive, Arrow, by the Hurricanes. It really was, and Boston College changed up their defensive philosophy trying to pressure Kosar. Didn't make any difference. He still picked them. What an offensive show. Seelig will kick it off. Tied again in Miami. This one will go out of bounds. 
And remember that drive started when J.C. Penny made the mistake down here and handled one that was going out of bounds. And as they mark off the five yards, let me again remind you that tomorrow, the season premiere of NCAA college basketball on CBS, the Louisville Cardinals against the Indiana Hoosiers. And after that, it is Notre Dame and USC. There are the Irish headed for Hawaii in a bowl game, regardless of what they do tomorrow, or do they have to win that one? It was my understanding when I left South Bend that they had to win the ball game to take the Aloha Bowl bid. And that this game is very, very important to them. As I understand it, they're really up because since 1966, Notre Dame has not beaten the Trojans in the Coliseum. Will they take the Rose Bowl bid away from the Trojans <laughs> if they the, lose tomorrow? Perhaps? No, but they would have liked to, perhaps, after their performance against UCLA, but they are emotionally ready for the Fighting Irish. Ball is kicked again from the 35, and it is fielded by Taylor. Breaks out to the 33-yard line, and here's Doug Flutie to handle it for the first time in the second half. It's a pretty good first half of football. Don't forget he ran for a third one. That's right. I used to have a lot of those kind of days, Era. This against the Fighting Irish, if I remember. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I won't deny that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> one setback behind Flutie. Steve Strahan. Been in for every snap so far at that position. And Flutie hits Phelan out of bounds at the 40-yard line. They'll throw it on first down, won't they? But an interesting thing about BC, as they prepared for this game, as they will for whomever they meet in the Cotton Bowl, they are much more concerned about their own tendencies during the season than they are about the defensive tendencies. And they spend a lot of hours poring over computer readouts, making sure that a defensive assistant somewhere can't come up with a tendency. But I would say look for Flutie to throw the ball often. You want to go out on a limb like that, huh? <laughs> Here comes Kenny Bell, who is checked in and Reggie Sutton leads the defense that time it'll be third down for BC it'll be interesting to see whether or not at halftime the Hurricanes have changed their philosophy whether or not they're going to try to pressure him and bring contained people because that's where they were really hurt in the first half this is a very key play right here of course it's third and two but you never know what Flutie's trying to do it's going to be an interesting formation that Bicknell just signaled <laughs> into Flutie. He's got two wide receivers to the left. They bring one in motion and run him out of a slot. Play fake and send his running back out and then hit the wide receiver. Oh, what a defensive hit delivered by Miami. Incomplete. Phelan couldn't hold on that time. Ken Calhoun did a beautiful job. Number two for the Hurricanes in the secondary. You see Flutie will put the ball right there, but Calhoun comes in, reacts to while the ball is in the air right there and really puts a hit on Ouch. Phelan. Woo! But Phelan bounced right up after that hit. hit. I want to tell you, that is something else. Does this PC punter ever get to play? <laughs> Here he is, Steve Peach. He's one of the quarterbacks. We'll have an opportunity to replace Doug Flutie next year. Those big shoes at that school, isn't it? Eddie Brown is set back deep, comes up with his hand for the fair catch. Ball will be put in play at the 23 when we come back. Hurricanes and the Eagles are tied. This is Hurricane is a blowing up there in the Bob Euchre seats here at the Orange Bowl <laughs> and down on the field. The Hurricanes have got a chance to blow up a storm and take a lead here if they can march in as they did the first time they handled the ball here in the second half. If you just joined us, Boston College struck for two quick touchdowns in the game. The first two times they handled the ball led 14-0 before Kozar and Miami came back. Bernie to throw it usually sets a screen when he drops that deep. Drops it to Daryl Oliver, complete. First down and out beyond the 40-yard line. 
want to tell you, Bernie Kosar on this Miami, Miami offense can beat you so many different ways. They've thrown the ball downfield, and the defense has to be concerned about that. Then they fake the ball to Darrell Oliver, their tailback. He avoids the rush of Mike Ruth, throws the ball over a defender, and there's Oliver, the man he had faked to, picking up a couple of nice blocks and scooting for another first down. A lot of offense. I'm not, I'm not sure how you can defend that. 19-yard gain for the Canes. The ball is spotted now at the 43. 10-31 to go. Third quarter. Here's Oliver. Bratton leads him. Penalty marker is down. Now? He was stopped for a yard loss. And we'll wait and see what the officials are going to come up here with a penalty. It may be against B.C. You can see here the defensive play number 95, Dick Gorecki, comes out here fighting off blockers, stepping over them. He gets support from the secondary. There's a good block here by number 50, who is Mike Moore. But there's a penalty. That line play. Round the goal side. But Aaron, that was a good shot of the line play and why Kozar has been successful because they've given him very aggressive run blocking as well as good protection for him to throw the ball. You know, he's had 219 yards of negative yardage during the course of the year, and you would think that they would get to him. But Boston College has not gotten to him one time. As a result of that offside penalty, it is first and five for the Hurricanes. Ball is at the 47. Kosar to Brown. Incomplete. Oh. Brown can't believe he dropped it. I can't either. <laughs> you look at Kosar. I am incredibly impressed with the speed and the burst of Eddie Brown. It looks like he's not going to catch up to this ball. Kozar gets a little bit of pressure, but he does step up and throws his ball as far as he can. But there's a burst there by Brown. He tries to adjust. Generally, he's going to catch that ball. The ball's a little bit to the inside. He tries to adjust. He slips and falls. I've seen him make a lot of those catches, but that time the BC defense got a little bit lucky. As Kozar released the ball, he clapped his hand. He thought it was a quick six for sure that time. Brown moves out to the right side. Second and five. We are even. 28 apiece. Complete to Bratton. First down. Inside the 40. 35. Finally run out of bounds at the 29-yard line by Vincent Munn. Bernie Kozar can take it downtown. A moment ago, we saw that to Eddie Brown, and then he can come right back and finesse you and dump the ball out to the flat to Melvin Bratton, number five, and let him do his thing. And again, that is why they are difficult to defend. You don't know what you should be dropping back in deep zones or coming up and hugging the backs as they come out of the backfield. Well, he's got such great peripheral vision that he always picks out the right open receiver. And so far, he's 17 of 24 for 320 yards and two touchdowns. So rack up another 300-yard day for Bernie Kozar, who is only a sophomore and will use a timeout and come over to the sidelines, saw something in that B.C. defense that he didn't like, wants to talk it over to his coaches. Bratton is being tended to. We'll be right back. What? Did you hear eight? Melvin Bratton, who was off on the side being tended to when you went to commercial, returned with 9.41 left here in the third quarter in Boston College in Miami, tied at 28. Bernie Any Cozy. time you use a timeout, it can affect you late in the fourth quarter. And now the Hurricanes have used one of their three. penalty flag comes down. This is the adjustment that Bernie Kozar has made here in the second half. He's going on a lot longer counts, Brent. You were right on that. He's changing his cadence. He is drawing a very aggressive defensive front from BC off, off size and getting a lot of cheap five-yard penalties. And he slows down the pass rush that way also because they can't tee off on the cadence. Off sides, Boston, first down. Some of the subtle things that good quarterbacks do, that's one of them, change the snap count. Ball is spotted at the 24. This is Oliver. To the 19. 
19-yard line and another first down. Andy Hemmer, the linebacker, brought him down. These last two drives by Miami have been very, very impressive. We saw a long drive a moment earlier to uh, to get the touchdown. Here they're controlling the ball again with some passes and running the football. But it, the biggest thing is they're keeping Flutie on the bench. Pat and Era, teams up north who come into the south late in the season sometimes run out of gas down the stretch. Now, this is not a normal day down south, I realize. Not nearly as much humidity as would ordinarily affect the team. But in talking to Jack Bicknell in Boston before they left, he was someone concerned about their stamina. Well, this is a good, cool day. But what I get the feeling here is that momentum has shifted in this game. Boston College had really had it in the first half. Now, Miami seems to have it. He's, they're keeping the Eagles off balance. First downs this quarter, eight for Miami and none for Boston College. He'll throw it on first down. Pops it to Oliver, the running back. Inside the 15. You mentioned at the top of the game, Era, that you didn't think the Hurricanes were playing with much enthusiasm. Here in the second half, they are playing with the spark, and BC doesn't have it right now. Well, you can just feel that the, the momentum in this game has shifted. But also, that time, the, the Boston College Ball Club tried to blitz again, did not get the Kosar. Kosar went one-on-one -on -one again. He just picks out. He seems to have a knack and vision to pick out the right guy. that time. I wonder if Jimmy Johnson mentioned anything at halftime about the Maryland uh, second half as well. Perhaps that was one reason they went and discussed that. And he came out with a lot more emotion here in the second half, like you mentioned. Very good point, Pat, because they were devastated here a couple of weeks ago after leading 31 to nothing, you know, and that can really hurt. And they seem to be flat when they first started, but they've picked up and they've got everything going their way right now. But you can't count Boston College out of this ball game. But in this quarter, Boston College has gained only seven yards to Miami's 129. Third and less than five. And on the delay, it's Bratton for the first down to the five-yard line. I have enjoyed the play selection of both of these coaches all day. Third and five, that's a passing down for Bernie Kosar, right? Well, you're wrong if you guess that, and that's what Boston College guessed, guessed. A little draw play to Melvin Bratton, who has the strength to break a tackle or two and pick up a first down. But tremendous play selection by both teams. Well, you talked about the momentum changing. The graphic shows the point. Well, Boston College has only had the ball once this quarter. Bratton cut down at the four. Mike Ruth, number 68. Their splendid nose guard. We got a big arm on him. Now it'll be second and goal. 7-9 left in the third quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Brent, you're probably seeing the best hurricane defense right now. <laughs> With, with Kosar and company on the field. Flutie on the bench, you're <laughs> right. right. I knew you'd find a way in the second <laughs> Yeah, but he's got to stop Kosar too, doesn't he? Bratton off the pitch. Behind Oliver, and that time he tried to go in the air, and he was just pulled down. And again, Ruth is over there helping out on the defense. Big number 68. What a nose guard he is. If you see the size of his arms, Brent, they're huge. Well, is this a passing down, Pat, or a running down? Well, the last time they were in a third down situation, they ran the draw play. I don't think that's a good call here. I'm expecting to see Kozar throw the ball. He has that big tight end, Smith. Incomplete. Stanley Shakespeare was the intended receiver. Bernie Kozar has a very big arm. It looked like he perhaps threw this ball a little bit too hard. He was only a few yards away from number six, Stanley Shakespeare. He was trying to hit him on a little slant inside the coverage. The ball was actually behind him as well. Stanley Shakespeare had beaten the defense, but not a very well-thrown ball by Kozar, really, for the first time today. Greg Cox on the field to attempt a field goal. It'll be a 19-yard attempt by Cox. 
I thought it was interesting there. Alvin Ward, number 72, 72 the offensive guard for the Hurricanes, wanted to go for it on fourth down, <laughs> signaling to the sideline, we want to go get the touchdown. Kick is up, and the Hurricanes have taken the lead for the first time this afternoon, 31 to 28. We'll come back with Doug Flutie in Boston College about ready to go to work. Back with Miami ahead and kicking off now, Mark Seeley. Kicks it into the end zone where it's caught by Taylor. He'll down it there on the touchback. It'll come out at the 20-yard line. Pat Hayden, I guess Doug Flutie just hasn't had a chance here in the second half. He's only had three plays here in the, in the second half. He only had the ball for a minute. And he's been, a little, he's been sitting on the sideline now. It's a little bit cold out here. But I, again, I expect to see Doug Flutie to get himself back into the rhythm of the football game. And remember, he needs to do to Kozar what Kozar has done to him, and that is control the ball, control the clock, keep Kozar on the bench. His brother, Darren Flutie, is in. Three wide receivers on the field for the Eagles in this formation. He goes to the right side, oh. and Phelan almost intercepted. That was Reggie Sutton. Boy, that was a dangerous, dangerous throw that time. The first time that really he has thrown a poor ball. And you'll see here Reggie Sutton, number one, come in here and almost intercept the ball. He reacts very quickly, off balance. He throws it, Sutton comes in. It is a low throw. But Sutton does not hang on. Good defense. And they put some outside pressure on there on Doug Flutie from Jerome uh, Brown, one of the tackles there. Contain Flutie. Sean Dombrowski has checked in. They'll run the draw play with Strahan. He gets out beyond the 20-yard line. Jerome Brown made the stop for the Hurricanes. Well, you can see what has happened in the second half. Momentum has shifted. They've done a great job. Of course, Flutie has only had, this is his second opportunity of possession. And uh, I think they need a play here to get them going again. They need a big play. Well, it looks like Miami defensively must have been listening to you, Eric, because they're containing Flutie from the outside, trying to keep him in the pocket this half. Ken Bell in. He's slotted to the left. Flutie drops back under pressure. Shovels it off to Strahan, the fullback, who slips, gets to the 26-yard line, short of the first down. It's three downs and out again. There was the perfect defense that time. They contained from the outside. They blitzed from the inside, and that's the way they kept him right in there. The, it was Fleming, Bruce Fleming, 58, the linebacker, came in. Watch here. Pretty good protection there. Contain him from the outside, and then he's going to get the inside pressure right there from number 58 Fleming. This is just precisely the defense coach that you were talking about that you would use against Flutie. Steve Peach back deep to punt. Eddie Brown, the return man for the Hurricanes. It's a short punt fielded at midfield by Kenny Calhoun. And here come Kozar and the Hurricanes. 4.32 to go in the third. Not a good punt, only 24 yards. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. As sophomores, Bernie Kozar has now moved to the head of that class, and that includes some sensational players. He has already broken the Miami career record as a sophomore, right. beating Jim Kelly, of course, who had a lot more playing time down here, although Kelly was injured in his senior season here with the Hurricanes, as I remember. He has gone on to greater glory in the USFL, of course, with Houston. Ball at midfield. Miami leading Boston College 31-28. Williams has checked into the backfield. Goes on to throw on first down. Look to the left. Comes back to the right side on the move. Intercepted. Intended for Stanley Shakespeare. And Todd Russell was over there helping out. So Flutie and BC will go back to work. Bernie Kozar gives you his Doug Flutie impersonation as he's going to try to avoid the rush. BC is trying to put a little bit more pressure on him. He steps to the outside, and then he makes a kind of a poor decision because the ball, he couldn't get any zip on the ball. And there's Todd Russell, number 45. Now watch him lateral in here to Thurman. Well, one more look. 45, Todd Russell takes the hit. A little impromptu play. He's got a little Doug Flutie in him, too, as he hands off to Thurman. 
First down, ball at the 30-yard line. Flutie will throw it under pressure, complete to his back. Number 23 coming out of the backfield, Troy Stratford. And he gets to the 40-yard line. We'll be very close to a first down for the Eagles. Very, very tough pass to cover because they fake the tailback action, and the tailback goes underneath the zoning linebackers, which is dropped deep to help out on the secondary people, and they just dump that ball off. We saw a week ago Keith Byers of Ohio State catch a number of passes the same way. You don't see Kozar to make too many throws like that. He's a very bright guy, very careful with the football. Boston College got the first down, and that is their first first down of this half with 4.04 to go in the third quarter. They trail it 31 to 28. Martin will go out to the left. Ken Bell is in at tailback. He is on the right wing. Now they show double wing. Gieselman cuts back, motion man. Flutie straight back, wants Gieselman, who's got the ball, battles his way to the 45-yard line. Another first down, and the Eagles suddenly are on the move. A 14-yard gain. Again, the difference in offensive philosophies. There's number 83, who's going in motion. He's going to be the man who catches the ball. That's Gieselman. Again, Boston College uses different formation, uses people in motion, and then Doug Flutie drops back and finds the open man. I believe I was told that Gieselman's father is the president of the Boston Stock Exchange, and a lot of his relatives have gone to Harvard and the Ivy League schools. Came time for him to choose. He said, I want to play big-time football. I'm going to Boston College. And he has helped lead this school right to the forefront. College football powers, especially in the East. Strahan bang straight ahead down to the 40-yard line. A gain of four yards. But it looks like the momentum now has swung back to BC after the turnover by Miami. The interception by Kozar. Finally, we're seeing a little bit more of Doug Flutie here in the second half. He's got the ball down to the 40, and this is why coaches absolutely detest turnovers. It just drives you crazy because momentum can shift, all kinds of things can happen, and here we see the Eagles again. Stratford the tailback. They fake to him. They throw down field complete. Inside the 20-yard line that time. As Doug Flutie is now 25 of 34, and he's thrown for almost 300 yards. He hit Phelan, his favorite target. Watch the coverage here. The toughest thing in the world is to stop a pass like this because Flutie gets the ball there so rapidly. Now he gets right into the seam right there, and the ball is bang right there. I can't believe how quick Flutie gets the ball there. And you see they're inside the 20-yard line. Mr. Excitement brings him up, Vera. Ball at the 19. Martin in motion on the right. Drops it off. Stratford. Brought down at the 16-yard line by Bruce Fleming, a linebacker who's played very well for Jimmy Johnson this afternoon. Again, here is where Flutie has been so tough down on teams. Most teams have difficulty scoring when they get inside the 20-yard line because the field is compressed. Doug Flutie does not face that problem because he can get the ball to so many different receivers. He also has the added ability of being able to run. We saw him run the ball in in the first half for a touchdown. Two tight ends now. Strahan, straight ahead, bangs to the nine-yard line. Doug Flutie throws the ball on you, scrambles, and then he comes right back and gives the ball to Steve Strahan. This is power football. They had two tight ends in the game. They can finesse you, and BC can run some power football at you. They ran for 270 yards last week. That makes them a very good offensive football team. <laughs> College is an even 500 on third downs. They're four of eight coming up to their ninth. And now they move ahead of it with that first down. Bang to the six-yard line with Strahan. Strahan has been their short yardage man right there. That's the, what, the 13th time they've run him in third and one situations, and he's made 12 of those. So he is a very, very powerful back for BC and important to have that short yardage runner in any offense. And that's what Miami misses in Highsmith. They hadn't shown that formation very much earlier in this ball game where they go two tight ends and two wide outs, puts pressure on the defense again. They're a multiple offensive football team. They cut him off 
to the left, incomplete. And Gieselman, the intended receiver, had slipped cutting back that time. If Doug Flutie didn't have a quick release, he would have been sacked here. He's trying a little bootleg action. This time, he did not fool the Miami defense. He's run this play a couple of times with some success. But he sees an open receiver, Gieselman, number 83, and a quick release here. And the way he falls back, he doesn't take the hit, and he doesn't take the sack. And that's an important play for Doug Flutie. Very good point, Pat, because they've got second down now at the five instead of second and 10 or 15. And it's really raining now. Flutie sprints to the left. Now he's going to come back. Now he's going to go back to the left. Throws it out of bounds. We're calling it. That and should have Miami been. Miami complaining about intentional grounding on that play. That should have been a grounding call. The official said the ball was tipped, though. And if the ball is tipped. There looked to be no receiver in the area, but the receiver, the official said the ball was tipped, thus it wasn't intentional grounding. But you can see what happens when the contain stays there. They kept driving him back farther and farther and farther, even though even though they didn't get him, he had a longer throw to make, the timing was off, and that's what they have to do. Stratford. Wisely laddles the ball to the Hurricanes, but they're going to whistle it dead. He was wrapped up by George Myra Jr., <laughs> one of the biggest names in Miami football history is his father, George Myra, who was the original scrambling small Hurricane quarterback down here. And Doug, his son read this play perfectly. Doug Flutie's his personality is infectious because Troy Stratford does this thing he really should do, and that is try to lateral the ball and make something there when it's not. But a surprising call, a draw play there on down on a third and five situation. I mean, not a draw play, a screen pass was a surprising call by BC. Kevin Snow to attempt a 29-yard field goal. If good, will be tied again. It's good. Five seconds to go in the third quarter. And it is Boston College 31, Miami 31. <laughs> Brett, I thought basketball game was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> go back on that play call era that point that Pat made what'd you think about that well he tried to get a screen out there it was a very very tough call but with with his ability and I'm talking about Flutie's I'd get people in the end zone because he can get the ball there so quickly and if, if not then go ahead and take the three points right a screen call down there there's nowhere for the defense to drop though that's why I was questioning the call the really screen call you use it in a zone defense when the defense drops back deep you dump it off to a back and let it run but down in the 10 yard line that's a tough part of the field to run it well, let me remind everybody that the weekend continues tomorrow of course Notre Dame USC college basketball then on Sunday the NFL today 12 30 Eastern time we're going to take a look at those gold dust twins 49er gold dust twins if you will Wendell Tyler and Roger Craig and they are the men who have given Joe Montana a very lethal running attack then our doubleheader the key first game is Philadelphia St. Louis the doubleheader games are the 49ers New Orleans and the Chicago Bears against the Minnesota Vikings Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes now will run out the clock here in the third quarter and then they will get possession to start the fourth and this has been a wild and woolly one this one's tough on coaches stomachs if you will. <laughs> and tough on defensive backs I'm not sure I want to be one of those and also consider the fact that all these things have happened with the conditions as they are the wind is blowing the rain is coming down they're thrown around like it's a dry field Watch out! Oliver breaks free and that's the end of the quarter and we'll return to Miami for the final quarter after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. The fourth quarter about to begin in the Orange Bowl. I'm Brent Musburger along with Pat Hayden and Eric Parsiga. And you are watching one of the more entertaining college football games of the year. With the rain coming down in the Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes of Miami and the Eagles of Boston College are tied at 31 apiece. Bernie Kozar, the sensational sophomore, now trying to bring the Hurricanes on. 
and right away he goes to Warren Williams, number 24, who bolts out to the 30-yard line. And Pat Hayden, what about the strategy now that will unfold here in the fourth? Well, I think this BC defense has to be careful of not giving Bernie Kosar a cheap touchdown. We saw Eddie Brown, number 40, their excellent wide receiver, get behind them earlier in the game. Force Kosar to go the dis distance, no easy touchdowns, and get Doug Flutie the ball back, put it in his, in his hands. Williams and Bratton are the running backs behind Kozar. This is Bratton on the sweep to the right. Inside the 40, almost to the 45-yard line for a first down for Miami. Doug Flutie awaits his turn. I think they expected Kozar to go back and throw, and here's the second run. Watch Bratton come off tackle, gets beautiful blocking right here. The wide out comes in, I think that was Brown, wasn't it, that came in, number 40, made a good block, and Bratton comes up with good yardage. Well, that's impressive when you see Eddie Brown come down and make a block like that, because five-yard runs become 20 and 30-yard runs when you get a downfield block. 15 more yards for Bratton gives him 66 for the game. Bratton flares to the left. Those are under pressure. Try to hit Bratton, who had lived incomplete, dropped the ball. Mike Ruth was putting pressure on Kozar and running him down in that situation. Look at that middle guard as you see the pass distribution of Kozar. Well, again, we've talked so much about this, but that's why we're seeing a 31 to 31 ball game because you can't really say, hey, I'm going to stop a wideout or I'm going to stop a running back because it, the minute you try to double up on someone, Bernie Kozar finds the other open receiver. And rolling to the left, he really made an excellent throw. He put it right there. The yardage today, and neither quarterback has been sacked. They're so good at escaping trouble. The frustration of Ruth that time as he tried to run Bernie into the ground. Here on second and 10, Kozar to put that time, they got him, the first sack of the game. John Bozen. He had Brown open. I was watching downfield here, and just as he was getting ready to throw the first sack of the day on Kozar. Well, here's a situation where BC wants to get the ball back in Doug Flutie's hands, and here they're going to come after Bernie Kozar. For the first time today, the protection breaks down a little bit. Kozar, it was good coverage. Kozar had to hold on the ball an awful long time. Bozar was, Bozar was there to make the uh, sack third and 21. They worked a stunt that time. They got that big middle guard, Ruth, working a trick over there on the outside. And the left side of the Hurricane offensive line could not handle the two big men. Kozar needs 21 yards for the first down. Sends it to his tight end. He's got him, Smith, for the first down. Inside the 45-yard line. What a clutch play. This is unbelievable. <laughs> really unbelievable. <laughs> Mike Smith, the tight end, he caught 12 passes in last week's game. It is a third and a 21 situation. The last person you're thinking about is getting the first down is your tight end. Who You don't think tight ends have that kind of speed. Well, Willie Smith does. And again, a beautiful throw because there was pretty good coverage there by the BC defense. Willie Smith is the tight end. They're playing loose on a third and 21 situation in the middle of the screen. Comes Smith, the tight end. Boom. There it is. For just, he got, what, 22, 23 yards, picked up the first down. Ball at the BC 44-yard line. 12-32 left in the game. Kozar throws back. Intercepted, I believe. Yes, it was. Hold on. Romanowski dove for the ball and came up with it for Boston College. Here's a second interception. We've seen Bernie Kozar throw here in the second half, but there's been pretty good coverage here by the BC secondary. He tries to drill the ball in, and there's Romanowski, number 53, who made a nice catch in front of Eddie Brown. The turnovers, Arrow, you said the turnover could be the difference. And you know, the thing that impressed me about the BC defense that time is they could have been discouraged after that third and about 20. They came right back with an interception. Now Flutie and the Eagles go back to work. The ball is on their own 33-yard line. Strahan running. Has an alley on the left side. Gets across the 40-yard line. Reggie Sutton over there helps get him out of bounds for the Hurricanes. We talked about Bernie Kozar's pass distribution a moment ago. Let's take a look at Doug Flutie again. 
12 to the running backs, the wide outs. He hasn't hit the tight end as much as he has in the past. The tight end position has had 42 receptions coming in to today's ball game. If you're, beast, if you're Miami's defense, you're going to be more concerned about the outside receivers force Flutie to get the ball to his tight end. Ken Bell checks in a tailback. Fake to him. Flutie goes downfield to Phelan, who's wide open. Inside the 20, the 15, down to the seven yard line before Reggie Sutton finally rolled him to the ground. A 51 yard pass play as the magic man Doug Flutie has done it again, and Jack Bicknell is right back with the next formation. You called him the crown prince at the top of the show. Right there on the bottom of the screen, number 20, Gerard Phelan. A little bit of room given by number one. Great move there by Phelan as he faked the post pattern, ran to the out. Reggie Sutton, number one, doesn't really do a very good job of recovering. And there is number 19, Fullington, the free safety, to come over and help make the play. Great move there by Phelan, though. He just faked Sutton right out. Right. I mean, Sutton had no chance. He put a move on him. No way he could catch up with him. Green driving down here at the Orange Bowl. They go to the tailback. And Stratford is driven out of bounds. It'll be second down for Flutie and Boston College. But would you be playing man coverage against Doug Flutie? I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm not sure I would against a guy like Flutie. Well, Pat, I think you got to mix it up. He is such a dangerous guy. you got to try to hide the coverages and mix it up as much as you can. That time, Sutton did not play it particularly well. I mean, he really should have squeezed him a little better. But he thought Phelan was going to go clear across the field, and he started in pursuit, and Phelan made that move, broke to the outside, and, of course, a beautiful throw by you-know-who. <laughs> <laughs> Bell in at tailback. Stratford out. This is Bell. Slants to the right and runs for the corner. Inside the five to the four-yard line. And Daryl Fellington rides him down. It'll be third and goal for the Eagles and Flutie. Well, the defense has really got to come up with a big play here to force a field goal. They can't afford a touchdown. It's, we're in the fourth quarter here. They did rise to the occasion the last time, but I don't know whether or not you can go man-on-man on, man on this in this defense. And a tough call here for Doug Flutie. It is a third and goal from the three-yard line. I, if I were Doug Flutie, I'd want him on the perimeter of the defense, roll him out, give him as many options as he can have. stopped short and the Eagles are apparently going to have to settle for another field goal and it was George Myra Jr. with another big defensive play. I want to tell you though that is a surprising call for me by BC on third and three. I'll tell you I'm pleased that they yeah, defensively the Hurricanes ought to be pleased that Flutie didn't have the ball to throw. They were able to stop this run. He tried to weave it back to the inside off the tailback action but I'll tell you this they'd have been nervous if Flutie had the ball with all the time and his ability to throw. I think I would have thrown that football. Kevin Snow to attempt the 19-yard field goal that would put BC ahead of Miami. It's good. With nine minutes and 46 seconds, Doug Flutie and Boston College lead Bernie Kosar in Miami 34 to 31. We'll be right back. When San Francisco won the Super Bowl, they did it on Joe Montana's arm. This year, they had the running of Wendell Tyler and Roger Craig. 49ers Gold Coast Twins. I'll have that story Sunday on the NFL Today. 9.46 left here in the BC Miami game. How about that third down call? Let's go back again. And uh, Pat, you were surprised. Errol, what about you? Same way I was surprised. I would, If I was the Hurricanes, I would be pleased with that. Look at that Myra come in there and smother him. BC kicks it off now. J.C. Penny. 15. 20, 25, out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It'll be first 10 for Bernie Kosar and the Hurricanes. Psychologically now here, Brent, Bernie Kosar has come back from the last two possessions and thrown interceptions. Now, when you're a quarterback, that affects your psyche. He was a very confident quarterback earlier in the football game. I'm interesting to see how he responds to those interceptions. Pat, overall, he's 19 of 30 for 347 yards. Those two interceptions and two touchdowns. Flutie's at 342 and a pair of touchdowns. And he has not hit one wide out this second half. And he did in the first half for 205 yards. Williams is the tailback. Kozar to put it up on first down. For Eddie Brown, who 
who comes up with a great catch at the 48-yard line. You know, Brent, you generally don't see great hands on outstanding speed, man. Number 40 at the bottom of the screen there is Eddie Brown. He does have outstanding speed, but he's made some remarkable catches with his hands today away from his body. He slips, he gets back up, he's cat quick, he makes the reception, he falls down and still stays in bounds. That's a remarkable play by Eddie Brown. Who has caught seven passes for 175 yards. First and ten for Kozar and the Hurricanes. Here's Bratton trying to get around the right side, and he's got daylight. Cuts back inside the 30. Through the 20. 10. What a touchdown run by Bratton. for the touchdown, 13 carries, 118 yards, and three touchdowns on the day. Now the extra point attempt. Greg Cox sends it through. Chris, you're right. It really is amazing watching Melvin Brad. Remember, we've seen him in the short yard jump, jump over the top. He's 205 pounds. It makes you think that he is a short yardage runner. He shows you some strength there, but then he's going to show you a couple of moves, and then finally his speed as he outruns three defenders. Remember, 205 pound man who's made some excellent short yardage runs goes 52 yards for the touchdown. Miami leads it 38 34. We'll be right back. Flutie's turn. Can it? <laughs> Nine oh no, three to go. That <laughs> game, it's dynamite. <laughs> Over a thousand yards in total offense. I predicted 900. <laughs> now remember, there's a four-point Miami lead, so Boston College has to be thinking touchdown and not necessarily field goal at some point. They kick it into the end zone, and Taylor's coming out. take one more look at Bratton's great 52-yard touchdown run. Watch number 50, who is Dave Thomas, get blocked by Warren Williams, and he sets Braxton free. Watch him break to the outside. Right there's the block. He almost gets him, almost recovers, and then it's all over, as we have seen. Makes a great fake there on Todd Russell. Cuts clear across the field, and his speed does it, as Pat Hayden pointed out. Great run. The thing that's surprising to me, and we'll get back to this right after this play, Brent. Rain driving down here, but the fans are not moving. They're just adding another raincoat. Flutie to put it up on first down. Penalty marker is down. He'll take off on the scramble. Gets to the 25-yard line. George Myra Jr. is all over the field was there on Flutie, but again, there is a penalty marker. The point that I was going to make is that right after the is during our research, the Miami offensive coaches were not too concerned about the loss of Alonzo Highsmith, and we thought, well, wait a minute, you yeah. know, you thousand yard said, rushing, yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden now we all understand yeah. why. Bratton is filled in very well, don't you think? He has indeed, Melvin Bratton of the Miami Hurricanes. 6'2", 205 pounds out of Miami. He is only a freshman, and he has contributed to that total offense record that we've got. 1,029 yards. I'll tell you, the defensive coordinator is going to have a lot of film to watch tomorrow. They're going to go past the Dow Jones. Here's the first and five after the penalty. Throws it complete to Phelan. Out to the 40-yard line for a first down. 
But you see here, Arrow, we talked about, there was no inside rush there on Doug Flutie. Yes, they're containing him in the pocket, but they're not having to have putting any inside pressure on Doug Flutie. It allows him to step up into a wide open pocket. Watch him step up. Nobody's there in the middle, right there. Plenty of room to find Fela number 20. They're gonna have to contain him from the outside and then put an inside rush on Flutie. Bruce Fleming, number 58, was a little late coming back on that play, and there was too big a seam between the defended, the, the deep defenders and the linebackers. We have an injured player down on the ground for Miami, and we'll come back and update that story for you. Phelan has caught nine passes for 153 yards. Time remaining here in the Orange Bowl with Miami leading Boston College by four points. Reggie Sutton of Miami was the injured player. He walked off the field under his own power. Benny Blades has come back in at safety for the Hurricanes. And they run Stratford on first down, and he gets another one. Now remember, the Eagles have not scored a touchdown this half. Two field goals, and Doug Flutie this afternoon against that Hurricane defense. I'm gonna tell you, our statistician, Mike Swanson, <laughs> has had to work overtime with these what. two guys. You know, if Doug wins wins the Heisman, let's take a look at Bernie Kosar. He's had an awfully big day as well. A few more passing yards. Did you say if? Yeah, I was say when he does. You know, oh, I got a quiz for you guys. Who is the shortest Heisman Trophy winner ever? Pat Sullivan. Wrong. Davey O'Brien. Ah, Davey O'Brien. Good question. All right. Ball at the 48. First and 10. Flutie in trouble. Scrambles out of it. Gets to the 43-yard line. Kevin Fagan brought him down there. Can you imagine how tired a defensive player is right now for Miami having to chase Flutie as much as they've had to do here this afternoon? Well, you bring up a very good point because you do expend more energy on defense. That's why you always hear coaches say they want to keep their defense off the field. Coaches say you expend more energy on defense, particularly when you're rushing a passer. And Flutie has rushed himself five times for 45 yards. Rain continuing to drive down here in Miami. And I would say that this field is held up remarkably well. Strahan, the runner, is dumped just inside the 45. It'll be third down right there. And seven yards to go for Boston College. We have not seen Boston College use as much uh, motion era as they did in the first half. Remember they had a couple of good motion plays where they brought their tight end Gieselman in motion, hit him a couple of times for some first first downs. This era could be one of the more important plays of the afternoon. Right, keep in mind it's a four-point spread. A field goal will not put him in the lead. Flutie to throw on it. Complete for the first down to Phelan. Inside the 20. Brought down at the 17-yard line. He is amazing. Let's take another look at this. Somehow or other, Phelan gets into the seam. He's lined up at the left end here, the split end. He goes down the field. Number one is Sutton's back in there again. He works to the outside, just an out pattern. There it is. You can see the linebacker slipped and fell, and he had no sheltering cover there. Remember, Phelan worked on number one, Reggie Sutton, a little earlier in the ball game, and caught that big corner route. That's the tenth catch by Phelan for 178 yards. They run Stratford. He gets to about the 12-yard line on that first down carry. What he has accomplished, Doug Flutie's roommate, back at Chestnut Hill, that lovely suburb of Boston, where Boston College sits. Tip O'Neill, a graduate of that school, is here in the Orange Bowl watching the action today. They recently named a library after him there, and some of the students are saying they should have named that Flutie Library. All he has done for Boston College in the last few years, oh, it's just remarkable what one man has done for a school's football fortunes. Here is second and five now for the Eagles. Strahan. Bangs down to the 
10. Arrow, one of the concerns about Jack Bicknell and the Eagles right now has to be the clock, not only scoring, but you really don't want to give Bernie Kosar too much time. Well, they've got a third down and about two yards to go. This is a big play. It'll be interesting to see how Miami deploys on this, whether or not they go to a goal line defense, as you see Jack Bicknell signaling the formation. The play is carried in, as you pointed out, Brent, but the formation is dictated by the coach. But really, BC has two downs here to make two yards, because remember, it is a four-point ball game. Doug Flutie has just used his first time out of the second half. That leaves the Eagles with two and the Hurricanes with two. We're coming back to the Orange Bowl in just a minute. Coach Jack Bicknell and his quarterback, Doug Flutie, still going over the strategy. It's 4.36 to go in the game. It is third and two for the first down. The ball is at the 10-yard line. I don't know whether I heard Flutie say drag underneath, whether he's going to bring somebody underneath. It seemed like I heard that. Let's see whether or not they come in here with a pass with a drag from one side to the other. Ken Bell is one of his running backs. He moves up to the wing on the right side. Sprints to the right. Has a receiver in front of him. He's got him. Run out of bounds. Inside the five-yard line, Kenny Calhoun was the defender against Strahan. They used the fullback coming out of the backfield. Tremendous pressure here by Miami. He had 82. Kelvin Martin wide open for a touchdown, but he was able to outrun the defense, dump the ball off for Strahan. Watch 82, Kelvin Martin. Now, he was going to be open here for a touchdown, but Flutie is under so much pressure, he had to get the ball to Strahan, and he picked up a first down. They have first and goal. Flutie is 31 of 42 for 392 yards. Strahan gets close to the goal line. But the only folks signaling touchdown were the Eagles. Nobody in a zebra suit down there threw up his arms. It'll be second and goal after that first down pass from Flutie to Strahan. Kozar will have three minutes and maybe 30 seconds to work with. That's enough time. Over the top for the touchdown. Boston College takes the lead. Strahan, the fullback, the workhorse of that backfield. Steve Strahan, he is their short yardage runner. He gets a nice surge from the right-hand side of the line, rolls his shoulders, breaks the plane of the end zone for the drive. was, again, classic Doug Flutie as he came out on that critical third and three down. They tried to blitz him. He got away from the pressure and picked up a first down, setting up the touchdown. Penalty markers go down. Kevin Snow was getting ready to add the extra point. Well, the big play on that drive, in my opinion, was the failing catch. Here's another shot of the touchdown, but the way they got there was that pass, that key pass to Phelan, which was the big play. Phelan has done it all game long, catching 10 passes for 175 yards. Strahan up over the top for the touchdown. I want to tell you, this is a very important extra point here by BC to put him up by three. He's missed three extra points this year, Brent. the kicker. It's good. It's Boston College leading by three. 3.50 to go and Kozar's at bat. Time remaining in the Orange Bowl. So in the third quarter, they kept the ball out of Doug Flutie's hands. But now in the fourth quarter, Kozar has had the ball for only three minutes and 19 seconds. And the most important moments of the fourth quarter for Bernie Kozar are coming right now. BC with the lead. Kicks it off. 
and J.C. Penny, the return man, comes to the 20-yard line. And a reminder, of course, that our action continues here this weekend on CBS tomorrow. The season premiere, the return of NCAA basketball, Louisville against Indiana, 1 p.m. Eastern time. The road to Lexington's underway. Then that game is followed by the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against the Trojans of USC. Gary Bender out in Los Angeles will describe that one at 3.30 Eastern time tomorrow on CBS. Daryl Oliver has come back in at running back along with Bratton. Bratton has been the running star here this afternoon. They run the end around, and here's Eddie Brown, and the Eagles were ready that time. David Piera, 41, read the play beautifully, came up and made the hit on Brown. And two times earlier, Miami had run that reverse for big yardage. This time, Pereira stayed at home, was disciplined enough there to make the play. You know, as I think about this game, Brent and Era, it looks, reminds me more and more about that Orange Bowl game a year ago, Nebraska versus Miami. You know, this kind of score, this kind of drama. And that resulted in a national championship for Bernie Kosar and the Hurricanes. Second and 11. The penalty marker is down. Kosar for Shakespeare. Driven out of bounds at the 35. But there was a penalty flag thrown on the play. The right tackle of the Hurricanes appeared to lift off, lift his right hand, just a count or two early, and it is going to go against Miami. Well, it's going to back Miami up, too. That's a big penalty right there because that would have been a first down. Now they're going to have second down and 15. I think if I was Boston College, I think I would deploy into a zone. Make them go the hard way. If you go man to man, or, or go after, I guess Miami, second down. Go after them. You could really get burned for a big one. I know it's a cliche to say this in a, during a great game, but it is a shame to see either of these teams lose this game. Bernie Kosar has been magnificent for Miami, and what more can you say about Doug Flutie? Next week, he's going to close out his regular season career at Boston College against Holy Cross. They're going to jet him to New York. He'll go down to the Downtown Athletic Club, and of course, he'll pick up his Heisman Trophy. Kosar, there's another penalty marker down. He's got his tight end Smith for an apparent first down. But let's wait and see what the penalty marker is. Neil Eiton with the coverage for the Eagles. Gary, you had the right call here, I think, in having BC's defense lay back and throw things in front of you. The BC people believe it's against Miami. An eligible receiver downfield and another Boy. costly penalty. Well, we talked at the beginning of the show, Brent. Remember how many penalties that Miami has had this year? Oh, 84. And this is what well, they've had four or five penalties today. And that's a loss of down also. That puts a third down and long yardage. They're really in a jam right now. They need a big play. And if they have to give the ball up, Doug Flutie is going to get very good field position. Pat, they have been penalized seven times for 55 yards. Just, Just about the point you've made. But those last, last two penalties were crucial. They had first down situations on both of them. And no reason on a pass you should have an illegal receiver down the field. Ball is back at the 10-yard line with 2.47 to go. And it's going to be third down and 21. faced one previous third and 21 in this game and hit the tight end Smith for 23. Kozar pulls out into the end zone. Flushed. Throws back over the middle to Oliver. Darrell Oliver gets back short of the original line of scrimmage. Neil Eiton, number 43, <laughs> defensively there for the Eagles. It looked like he was going to make it, though, did it there for a minute. They say Bernie Kosar is not the most mobile guy in the world, but he knows how to buy himself a little bit more time. You're going to see him get out of the pocket. Now, he knows he's in the end zone here. He knows, knows potentially it's two points, but he does get out. He has the vision. He picks up a nice block, buys himself a little bit more time, dumps it off to Oliver with 20 yards. He's going to pick up a nice block here on the outside, Oliver is. And there, just short of the first down. Ball was down. 
Time remaining, 219. Miami will go for it on fourth down. We'll be back with that play in a moment. No question about our Chevrolet players of the game. For Miami, of course, it's Bernie Kosar. And for Boston College, it is Doug Flutie. So a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. And what a performance these athletes have given us here this afternoon. 219 left. It's 41-38. Boston College over Miami. Fourth down, Bratton's got the first down. Gets out to the 35-yard line. Down to 215, and Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes with a chance against Jack McNell and the Eagles. BC goes with their bread and butter. That's Melvin Bratton, who's been a strong runner all day over the right side. Dave Heffern in his tackle gave him a nice block. It was a fourth and one situation. Bratton is strong enough to pick up the first down. Remember earlier, Eddie Brown got open deep and dropped a certain touchdown pass. He is split out to the right side. Stanley Shakespeare is to the left. Kozar wants Brown, has it near midfield. It'll be another first down. Todd Russell, who intercepted a big pass for the Eagles, was there with the coverage. The footwork of Eddie Brown, big rush there on Kozar, but he has a strength in his arm. And again, once more, Eddie Brown comes back for the football. So many receivers don't do that, and that, those result in interceptions. But Brown does come back and catch it with his hands. He's caught eight for 190 yards. A certain top draft choice in the National Football League. Late in the day, and with the rain having pelted down, it is difficult for Kozar to set himself and throw as hard as he'd like to. Brown makes a cut on the right-hand side. It got him right now at the 41-yard line. Tony Thurman with the coverage. Great players play great play great in big games, and that's what this is. This is a big game, and you're seeing some great play by number 40, Eddie Brown, as well as Bernie Kozar, and a whole host of people out there. A little curl in, he beats you deep, he beats you on out routes, then he comes back with a little curl route. Very difficult to defend the man. Minute 33 on the clock, and they're measuring out to see if they have the first down. And Brown has 200 of the total 1,153 yards. You know, Aaron, I'm surprised that BC hasn't put somebody over Brown's head really to slow him up at the line of scrimmage. He's been running off the line of scrimmage free. Maybe they ought to put a linebacker out there or something to slow him down. You know, I think the fans are seeing two of the best college football teams from a passing standpoint and receiving standpoint that I've seen in a long time. Perhaps in the history of the game, Brown is still split out to the right. But Kozar's looking left this time. Throws underneath. And that is Bratton. Inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line. An amazing run by Bratton. Thurman finally brings him down. I think one of the interesting things, they doubled up on the wide receivers, and immediately Kozar goes right now to the single coverage guy, goes to Bratton right there. And the double guys, he lets go and watch Bratton run, put the moves on. <laughs> Tremendous football player, and he's a replacement for Alonzo Highsmith. <laughs> oh Not my. a bad replacement. Yeah. Kozar now at 425 yards passing for the game. Backs up on first down. Throws incomplete. Wanted his tight end Smith that time. Romanowski, the linebacker, was there on the coverage for Jack Picknell. Here in the Orange Bowl, a minute to go in one of the most exciting games of the year with Boston College leading the Miami Hurricanes 41 to 38. BC headed for the Cotton Bowl. Miami to the Fiesta Bowl. Second and ten. Kosar hit, goes to the end zone, overthrows Stanley Shakespeare. It was overthrown on Stanley Shakespeare, but it would have been a touchdown had, but there was pretty good pressure put on Kozar by the Mike Ruth and some of the other offensive, uh, defensive line of BC. That's what caused him to overthrow Shakespeare. Gorecki was among 
those defensive players coming in hard that time. Third down and ten. Inside of a minute. Ed Brown now goes to Kozar's left. Shakespeare is to the right. is missed and Eddie battles his way to the five-yard line incredible effort with Thurman hanging on at the top of the show we said Bernie Kozar was going to get the ball to the wide receivers and unless you put a linebacker over his head he's going to keep throwing this out route to Eddie Brown he's caught at least five out routes and then you're going to see the tremendous determination and effort by Eddie Brown as he makes a tackle and there's somebody there Thurman is hanging on as Eddie Brown is getting everything he can out of the reception for the game Eddie Brown has caught 10 passes for 220 yards we'll be back an incredible performance by Eddie Brown watch him here as he gets away first from Neil Iton, then Thurman will come up, grasp him by the ankle and pull back, and Brown battles his way to the five-yard line. May have stretched a ligament. He left the field, though, under his own power, and he has given the Hurricanes an opportunity to pull this one out. 46 seconds to go. Doug Flutie in Boston College watching now as their defensive teammates try to shut down Bernie Kozar. Here is Oliver running to the left. Gets up to about the two-yard line. 30 seconds left in the game. Miami is down to its last timeout, remember. They have used two of their three. And that'll be all of their timeouts. They have just called number three. positive statement about what he wanted to do. I think he wants to run the ball right at them. However, he's got no timeouts remaining in 30 seconds. If he's going to do that, he needs to call two plays in the huddle. That's exactly right. And they've got plenty of time to run two plays. Rain coming down hard again. Kozar on the afternoon is 25 of 38 for 447 yards. Miami will attack with three tight ends. Willie Smith, of course, is the lead one. Bratton and Oliver are set there. on Boston College with only 28 seconds to go. Boston College has two timeouts remaining. It is not impossible. That's Alvin Ward. Let's take a look at the touchdown by Melvin Bratton. We've seen four or five short yardage plays each time. They've given the ball to Bratton, and he's dived over the top here. Good surge <laughs> by the offensive line that allowed him to do that. He really didn't have to dive. I mean, there was a hole there as you look at it again. 
Well, they did what Kosar wanted to do. <laughs> they, they listened to Bernie, didn't they? <laughs> but this was a, the culmination of an interesting drive. Remember the great effort we saw by Eddie Brown on the reception on the play before this. The great determination of Bernie Kosar and Melvin Bratton on a couple of runs before that. And the blocking of the offensive line. Watch the surge there. You're right, there is a big hole there. He doesn't have to jump. He made up his mind in the huddle, it looked like. But nonetheless, he's in the end zone. Mike Moore was the blocker. The extra point is added. And it's 45-41 as Miami moves 79 yards in 12 plays. The drive took 322. And there's nothing but heartbreak for the Eagles, who have played so courageously here this afternoon. Keep in mind, there was a fourth down and a short yardage situation in that drive. And you know, things can happen. You can slip. You can have a mishandle of the ball. That was a very critical play there also. Now, don't count that man out yet, though, either. He has two timeouts remaining. I know it's a, he's in tough odds, but he's got two timeouts left. That's right. You can't count that fella out right there. First thing they want is a good return on this kickoff. They want to give him some decent field position to work with. Or don't return it and waste time on the clock. CBS, of course, Dukes of Hazard, Dallas, and Falcon Crest. That all coming your way. CBS Evening News is too, along with Dan Rather. That's still ahead of us, unless we play for another hour and a half here. <laughs> That's right. Tyrone Taylor and Steve Williams will be set deep for the Eagles. Era, would they squib it here, you think, and try to upset a return? No, I think he'll kick it. I think he'll get a try to get it downfield. They don't want to give him field position, plus he's got the win. It'll be at the 20-yard line, 28 seconds for Doug Flutie and the Eagles. What a game this has been. 1,193 yards of offense. 649 for Miami. 544 for Boston College. Do you like my defense? <laughs> <laughs> nice job. You're the defensive coordinator. You're fired. <laughs> up Stratford and there's a penalty flag down they get out to the 39 they'll get the clock stopped at 20 seconds BC rushes three and drops eight here which is obviously what you want to do in 30 seconds but Troy Stratford is out on a wing he is normally a halfback again Flutie just finds the area where Stratford is in Stratford is do doing his best to try to get out of bounds Miami was declined. So on the 19-yard gain, the ball is spotted at the 39. Flutie now goes over 400 yards with that pass. 4-11 on the afternoon. And he's not finished. Gets it out of bounds. Gieselman is tied in. Cross midfield. 12 seconds left on the clock after that 13-yard gain. The chains move, of course, for another first down. Boston College has not used either of their two timeouts. Remember that the clock stops on a first down in college football. 12 seconds to go. And Doug Flutie is within 48 yards. Got time. Incomplete. Intended for Peter Casparilla. A tight end coming across at the 32-yard line. And now Doug Flutie is down to his last at bat. I really think Flutie's got to throw this ball into the end zone or down around the five-yard line in hopes of, if they don't get the completion, a possibility of an interference. Game cannot end on a defensive penalty so they would have another play so I think he's got to put it up 
down him deep in the end zone. Maybe a design scramble to allow him to find some time. Penalty marker is down. Play is stopped. One thing is certain. Those brave folks who sat out here in the Orange Bowl and put up with this terrible weather saw a whale of a football game, and they should give both teams a rousing ovation when this one is over. This is one of the better ones that I've seen. Kosar, who did everything he could, and like we said, it went down to the last at bat. And Flutie and Boston College have won it. He's asking where Kosar is. Only this is one of the most remarkable football games I have ever seen. The last play. Doug Flutie is here. First of all, he gets excellent protection by his offensive line. He's going to scramble a little bit, but the Miami defense does something you just can't do in a situation like this. There is no time left when he throws the ball. There are a lot of de defenders there. The Phelan is behind the defense where you just cannot let an offensive pass receiver and those kinds of situations get behind you. The ball was in the air for 64 yards. Take a look in the middle, number 20, Gerard Phelan, Doug Flutie's roommate. He knows it's a de desperation throw. All he is hoping back here is for a tipped ball. He is behind the defense, though. That can't happen. It cannot happen, but it did. Doug Flutie and his roommate, Gerald Phelan. Last year at the Liberty Bowl, they had a fire alarm break out in the hotel. Phelan got up and said, women, children, and Doug Flutie first. He knew what he was talking about. Boston College has won at 47-45, and we'll be back at the Orange Bowl after these messages from your local stations. <laughs> the pride of Rosemont, Pennsylvania. Gerald Phelan has just caught a ball thrown by his roommate, Doug Flutie. And Gerard did it today, did he? And, uh, it worked out for us early on in the season. He got behind the defense when it really shouldn't have happened. Yeah, we, what we to do is just get you know, we started out the telecast with the idea that it was going to be a wing and a prayer, and that's exactly what happened. Take a look at this last play. It's unbelievable. What As you reconstruct it, you'll watch here as Reggie Sutton, number one, will knock Daryl Fullington off balance as he goes up to knock the ball down. Now watch here, Phelan gets behind Fullington. Fullington, 19, goes up right there. Now number one, right there, Sutton knocks Fullington off. Phelan is there to catch the ball. The clock is out. What a fantastic finish. Phelan caught 11 passes for 226 yards and two touchdowns. Flutie. 34 completions and 46 attempts, 472 yards, and three touchdowns. And this play, one of the most memorable in college football history. 1,273 total yards this afternoon. As Flutie, flushed to the right, with the time running out, gave it all he had. And here's what the young man saw. We've got it. The Crown Prince has done it again. <laughs> the mighty man of college football. 
Oh, that's super. Doug Flutie in Boston College. Pull it out, 47 to 45. We'll be right back. <laughs> 